Um, I understand why Bitcoin went from 19,000 on March 13th, uh, the week after the weekend of uh, Signature and Silicon Valley Bank basically going into receivership. It was a flight to safety, 19,000 to 20, nearly 28,000. That, that boy was uh, that proof of concept right there, decentralized, transparent, audible, auditable, and so forth. The recent performance of Bitcoin and Ethereum during the U.S. banking system struggles has highlighted the demand for transparent, auditable, and decentralized financial services. While the traditional banking system has shown its weaknesses, cryptocurrencies have continued to operate smoothly, proving to be a safe haven asset for investors. In March, Bitcoin's value appreciated by 49% from $19,500 to just under $29,000. Despite regulators blaming crypto for the banking crisis, the focus should be on the centralized points of failure in the traditional banking system. Bitcoin facilitated approximately 9 million transactions, settled $650.50 billion worth, and generated $700 million worth for miners during March. The demand for more transparent, auditable, and decentralized financial services continues to grow, with crypto now truly being seen as a solution to the issues of the traditional financial system. Kathy Wood, the CEO of ARK Invest, remains bullish on crypto, even though she disagrees with Balaji Srinivasan's recent prediction of a $1 million Bitcoin price within the next 90 days. In a new interview, Kathy Wood shares her analysis on the current markets and the fragility of the banking system, which has further solidified the case for Bitcoin. Balaji Srinivasan, who recently predicted a $1 million Bitcoin price by June 17th of this year, also shares his views on why he believes that Bitcoin will experience a crazy run to $1 million. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. Many people had their money in, deposit, in deposits at the bank, and this crisis actually has forced them to focus on what they're earning in the banks and versus what they could get into money market in money markets and so yes well, they've meaning, all become yield farmers well not only that and isn't that something so you see them in their minds in their minds what they're saying is i am going to lower my risk by leaving the banking system and increase my return now isn't that upside down that's not how the world works and this i worry about from a bank deposit point of view and and the reason for this is lending and ultimately lending is going to shut down and uh and then you you were right by starting out with a hell to maturity we don't have to go through that that has been uh, studied and i'm sure a lot of people know about it but what people have talked about available for sale you mark to the market right away for that you know quarterly so that hits earnings held to maturity if you sell those you it hits equity but what they're not talking about is the rest of the asset side of the balance sheet of these regional banks and it's real estate yes exactly they're getting crushed on everything yes uh, yep. commercial real estate 75 percent of real estate loans out there are uh, if they're from a bank are done in the regional banking system. And I would submit that uh, uh, that residential will be hit in another way because there has been so much overbuilding with the capital markets now facilitating this of multifamily homes that we have now coming online, the largest number of apartments in 40 years, in 40 years. So, and so we were going back to the seventies, which was, so when I look at that, I said, okay, that was real estate speculation. That was inflationary. But I do think that rents will now come down dramatically, velocities coming down. And I, again, worry about GDP and economic activity. Most banks have some amount of unrealized loss in security. How big a deal is that? Who the heck knows? The point is though, that all like, like a flock of pigeons, the entire market has been spooked, right? Cash is now a, a risk asset. People are, you know, moving to money market funds. Um, people are, you know, moving into big banks. All this money is now liquid. It's digital and it's moving around like a cloud and it's looking for the safest thing. And if some of that starts getting out of the system into Bitcoin, that is hyper Bitcoinization. Right. Or it is Bitcoinization and then eventually hyper Bitcoinization because it's it's looking for safety. And once it realizes, if it realizes that actually within the system, there isn't safety and it starts seeking an exit, 
that's basically the thesis. All this money is being rendered super liquid and digital. And then what's gonna happen is with something like FedNow, they're gonna to try to impose capital controls or, or blocks on getting out of the system. So that's kind of my thesis, as opposed to micro things about what's gonna happen over here. People don't think their money is safe in the bank. The assurances that people are getting are conflicting. They're like, you know, oh, on the one hand, you're responsible for going through all of your bank's 10 Qs. And on the other hand, Yelna saying sometimes that they're going to back all deposits. Uh, you know, you have basically not FDIC, but you have FedDIC, right, where all 18 trillion gets back. The net effect of that is maximum certainty plus maximum liquidity. Yes, I think. Uh, and, and so here we're back to the velocity question. Everything you have just said tells me velocity will go down and that the risks to the economy are to the downside here, including inflation. So here we're coming to the same as we started at the beginning. Um, I understand why Bitcoin went from 19,000 on March 13th, uh, the week after the weekend of uh, Signature and Silicon Valley Bank basically going into receivership. It was a flight to safety, 19,000 to 20, nearly 28,000. That, that boy was uh, that proof of concept right there, decentralized, transparent, audible, auditable, and so forth. So we are on the same page here. I worry that, um, that this economic downturn, this uh, deflation is a much bigger problem right now. And I do, I do, if you're going to say, well, they're just gonna throw money at it, uh, we just saw that the Fed raised interest rates for the first time ever in the middle of a crisis. And today, um, this week, uh, they've been talking once again about the need to increase interest rates at the next meeting. So I don't think they respect market signals. And this is a big problem. They are not looking at market signals. They're looking at massively lagging and unreliable indicators that are based on, uh, in a world, the statistics came from the industrial age. So they're, they're not even looking at the right numbers. Pricing signals are the most important signals right now. Credit default swaps, interest rates, yield curves, right? Bitcoin, yes, I agree with that. But I, I think you might have your uh, hyper um, inflation of Bitcoin and I think what we're coming to, if you are, you seem to be nodding when I say what I'm saying about the banking system and the risks to the economy, uh, it's not going to be inflation. In, in, it, it is not going to be inflation that, that we're worrying about this year. Um, it, it will be something else. It may be counterparty risk, but I don't think it's going to be inflation in the prices of goods and so services. And many people will say, oh, the dollar, the dollar is going to collapse. Well, you know, the dollar is measured. You, if you're measuring it in terms of prices and goods and services, right now it's going up if you're looking at commodities, right? The dollar is appreciating. If you're looking at it in terms of other currencies, after a 25% run in a very short period of time, it's come down. But at the same time, it's come down in the last few months, commodity prices have come down. Um, during my discussion with Art Laffer last week, we were talking about Bitcoin and he said, we really need to add, in terms of trying to figure out what's really going on out there in terms of the money multiplier, add Bitcoin to the monetary base and we'll get a better picture. So he's already thinking in this way. And um, I was so happy that he said it. Uh, you know, half of the solution is understanding a problem and understanding how we should try and uh, frame things to understand what's really going on out there. So this idea of adding Bitcoin, uh, which is uh, a little over 500 billion uh, to the eight and a half uh, trillion uh, in the monetary base. Uh, it was a start and, you know, a, a start of a conversation um, because we do have to deal with the world we're living in. The one you're talking about, um, uh, I think will evolve over time, but it doesn't happen overnight. You, you might say the banking crisis is giving us that opportunity. And I think uh, it may it may happen faster than otherwise might have been the case. 
but uh, you know, I am going to continue paying attention to market signals. I see credit default swaps settling down a bit. We haven't seen, so I think that's a risk there that there's another episode. Uh, so we're uh, we're watching we're watching all of this very carefully and watching the stock market. Now the stock market is very sensitive to all of this, and it is very interesting for me to watch the stock market levitate through all of this. And I think one of the reasons it is is it smells the end of rising rates. It sees over whatever the Fed's going to do right now to much, much lower interest rates because of this deflationary pull from monetary policy and uh, uh, gone wrong, velocity falling, and the, the, that's the bad deflation side of it. But then you've got the good deflation side of it, as you said, and I always want to end on a very hopeful note. And the good, the good, the, the very positive form of deflation we're going to see, uh, if, if we're right, is going to cause enormous growth in everything blockchain related, in all that innovation, as well as, you know, the other platforms, you know, the multi-omic sequencing, robotics, uh, energy storage, and artificial intelligence. And they're all going to start converging. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's messy. It's messy getting from here to there. But I think, again, just the recognition of what can go wrong with the banking system, I think is going to cause more people to seek more insurance policies. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.